Ladies and gentlemen, it's the F and G show. The F and G <clears throat> show. Not over a glass of wine. Not this time. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna get right into it. We got some more sports news. Uh, this is um, my man Kyrie Irving. He speaks about the vaccine and his beliefs. Kyrie. He did this on Instagram Live, you know, the other day. Let's see what he got to say. You know, I had to stop running away from using my voice and using my platform to, uh, you know, speak on what's true and what's mine. You know, nobody's going to hijack my voice. Nobody's going to take the power away from me that I have for speaking on these things, you know. And don't believe that I'm retiring. Don't believe that, <laughs> you know, I'm going to give up this game uh, for a vaccine mandate or staying unvaccinated. Don't believe any of that shit, man. Like, like really be aware of what's being said uh, before I even get a chance to be on the podium and speak for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, all these people saying all these things about what's going on with me, and it's just not true. Pay attention to what's going on out in the real world. You know, people are losing their jobs to these mandates. Uh, people are having to make choices with their own lives, which I respect. You know, and, and I don't want to um, sit here and, and play on people's emotions either. Just use logic. You know, what would you do? You know, if, if you felt uncomfortable going into the season uh, when you were promised that you would have exemptions or that you didn't have to be forced to get the vaccine, you know, this wasn't an issue uh, before the season started. This this wasn't something that I foresaw coming where I prepared for it. And, uh, you know, I had a, a chance to strategize on what was going to be best for me and my family. I came into the season uh, thinking that I was just going to be able to play ball, you know, be able to use my my talent uh, to continue to, uh, you know, inspire, influence people in the right way. You know, this, like putting this on me is just like, why are you putting it on me? You know, like this, this is not part of, uh, <laughs> you know, what's going on in conversations with scientists, physicians, and doctors. I'm, I'm just a hooper, right? Like I'm, I'm just a person uh, who, who's being utilized as, as an example. For some odd reason, you know, people love to have my name in the mix of just some BS. Like, just hearing the way people speak so, con you know, with so much conviction about what I should be doing with my life and, and what, you know, my teammates should be feeling about me, what the organization be feeling about me. That's like that was it of the video, huh? Yeah, it stopped right there. I guess he was rambling out some more, bro. But YouTube cut him off or something? I don't know. That's, that's only two minutes. Oh, he just cut it, it was, off or something happened to his off. video. It was longer than that, but, you know. Yeah, it cut it off. Anyway, well, what do you have to say, Frank? My first impression is, two, I have two first impressions, and they're going to both come from, um, and then I'm going to backtrack. They're both going to come <laughs> from Star Trek. Oh, Lord. When the board were destroying the Enterprise, and capturing the Enterprise, Jean-Luc Picard was a hard nose, and he wanted to fight the Borg, even though he was winning. They were the Borg was winning, and um, the character that was played by Alfred Woodard said, "Your your 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 crew is used to listening to your orders when they make sense." And Kyrie didn't. He makes sense, but he doesn't make sense. And so when the Borg was destroying the ship, the Enterprise, or taking it over, Alfred Woodard said this, and I'm quoting the line, John Luke, blow up the damn ship. <laughs> Kyrie Irving, take the damn vaccine. Um, and then, that would be my first response. My second response would be something Mr. Spock would say, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. So millions and millions upon millions of people have gotten the vaccine and Irie, Kyrie, Kyrie, whatever your name is. Kyrie. Kyrie, you're, you're just the one. So the needs of the many outweigh the needs of just your one person. But yes, you are, you can choose not to get vaccinated. That is, that is, that is, that is a true statement. Um, but others can choose not to be around you too. Everybody has a right. 
you have a right to get vaccinated and they have a right to isolate themselves from you. So the choice is this. It goes back to the book I just mentioned in a previous video, The $40 Million Slave. You say you have all this power. What would you really do with it? What will you really do with it? That's my question. What will you really do with the power you seem to say that you have? Well, we're seeing, I, I say we're seeing what he'll do with the power he has. Um, the, one, the one thing you said, man, about being vaccinated um, for the greater good for mankind, you can see all the people passing away, all the people getting sick. Mm -hmm. um, you can't say that it's a common cold. You can't say it's the flu because... Even the flu each year, folks, some die from flu, but not like they dying. You know, from so COVID. You, yeah, so you can't say, so you know it's something more powerful out there. Yes. So my thing is, if this is going to help, before you go to any school, uh, in the South at, at least, I don't know about North, but mm -hmm. South at least, they got what they call a blue card. Oh, yeah, we all had a They would too. not let you get in there. Not in school. Mm -mm. Unless you had your vaccinations. That's right. Day. What did you get your measles vaccination? What else? You got your. your you had the measles, measles the your mumps, mumps, chicken pox. Chicken pox vaccination. Um, and then earlier, earlier, they had the. Um, the um, what's you call that? With uh, smallpox. Smallpox vaccinations. Yeah. And even smallpox. Back in, they did it. Like, Frank probably got it. But by the time I came around, because it was done, mm -hmm. we didn't have to get it anymore. Right. Right. Now, I had to get it again because depending on what country you go to in the military and everything. Yeah, you, you know, have right? to get your shots again. But you got to get that vaccination card. No one says anything you, about that. You when got they get vaccinated their kid. when you went to the Air Force, didn't you? Yeah. I got mean. vaccinated when I went to the Army. I couldn't say, oh, I want to come in the Army, but I'm not taking your vaccines. They would say, well, hit the door, Jack. Exactly. <laughs> Don't you come back, back no, no more, more, no more, no more, no more. more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come, come back, back no more. more. So what Kyrie, you say? <laughs> and so Kyrie Irving is saying, what you say? Yeah. And they're telling him, hit the road, Jack. they tell telling Kyrie, Kyrie, I can't pronounce his name Kyrie. right. They're telling him to hit the road. Will you give up your money over a vaccine that you can, you yourself can prove whether or not it works? You can talk to friends who've had it. You can do. You can talk to doctors who've had it. You can. You can talk to your friends who got the vaccine and they're just fine. So, will you give up your million dollars of contract for? Yeah. For what? So my thing is, it all goes back to what we said in the prior video about uh, the organizations and everything. I couldn't go into. I'll just use a fast food restaurant. I could go in, I couldn't go into Burger King and say, hey, I want to work here, but I ain't taking none of y'all vaccines to work here. Or we'll use marijuana. Yeah, I smoke weed, but I want to work for y'all. Well, if you smoke weed, you can't work for us. But it's legal here in, in the state of Colorado. Yeah, it is legal in the state of Colorado, but this is my establishment. <laughs> and I do not want people um, on any kind of types of drugs like that. Right. To work for me. Right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. And that's the end of it. Right. But you can't get in there and then all of a sudden you get popped for smoking and they're like, well, they just passed the law. I've been working for y'all for 20 years. Yeah, they passed the law that you can smoke, but you still can't do it here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if the people say we want to look out for the folks here on the team and folks, the, the um, cheerleaders and the, the um, coaching staff the trainers, the uh, fans at large, we got to have our team vaccinated. The players got to get vaccinated. That's exactly right. And Kyrie should understand that. I mean, should, should understand. I'm not sure where his logic is, but it, it's, it sounds illogical to me. And, but he should understand. And I'll say this. Just like with Kaepernick, when they were saying how he lost his job and everything. Be Kaepernick. Lose your job and move on. And then you that's be a, a good point. I agree. There's and a good Kaepernick point. has a, a, a show, a, a Netflix special um, about his journey. And everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to check that out when it come out. Because he kind of went silent for a while, but they said he wasn't silent. He's still out there, but... He's still doing the good the, work. The network, I mean, uh, uh, Netflix is going to let us know what's going on with him. But if Kyrie feels that way and everybody say, yeah, man, stand, stand your ground, stand your ground. That's up to you. 
You know what? How much money you make? You should have enough money to live your life out. comfortably. Yeah, pretty much. Without even working anymore. Huh? Investments. Yeah, so you might. You can retire. I'm you sure. Should be able to. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. if, and if not, then you might walk your mouth shut and get that money. But oh, no. get the vaccine. <laughs> yeah, get the vaccine. That's what I mean by keep your mouth shut, get the vaccine, get the money. <laughs> but for a while, they were saying you can't play home games. You can play away games, but you can't play home games. Mm -hmm. So they now they're saying he ain't playing at all. So now. You know, I'm like, if that's the case, they got what they call workload where the guys will take days off to get, they're not hurt or anything, but they they don't want to play you the whole season now. Mm -hmm. Workload, you get a certain age, whatever, you don't have to play every game. We can let you sit there. Don't play this game because we don't beat them. We don't need you, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be part of his workload. But okay. now they're saying he ain't working. I mean, he ain't going to play anything. So if that's his case, Ask to be traded to a team that's willing to have you come without being vaccinated. Yeah. That's you're all you can do. A, you're still in the game of basketball. But I believe 90% of the NBA is vaccinated, I believe. That's what the oh, yeah, yeah. latest no, stats. But they're taking it because New York has a mandate. Oh, New York. So that's know. why there's like that. You can't work in any establishment. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what New York is like. But he go to um, L.A. or mm -hmm. any other. Um, <laughs> not L.A. I don't think he's going to go back with LeBron, though. But he can go back, do that kind of stuff, and uh, still play because they don't, they're don't they not really pushing that. Well, some of the news talking heads have said that Kyrie is kind of a diva type. He's been on several different teams, and he always causes a ruckus. So, you know, I don't know what's going on in the NBA that much, and I don't know nothing about Kyrie Irving's life. And I know people say that he he's uh, – sometimes he's complicated – complicated a team he's not always a team player or maybe he's just different special I don't know but in this case um I don't know if he has a leg to stand on he can he can choose to not get the vaccine but you're going to have to accept the consequences of them saying you can't play you're not going to put nobody in danger so um that's just something he's going to have to deal with if he's got enough money he can yeah. go home and retire well we're going to move on to the black history flash card uh, get through this real quick. Frank wanted me to do one that I can't read to do names. So I'm going to read one that I can read. And it's Rube Foster. He was an American baseball player, manager, and pioneer executive in the Negro Leagues. Mm -hmm. he, elect, he was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1981. Hmm. All right. It was about 50 years after he died. Oh, wow. Best African American pitcher of the first decade of the 1900s. He organized the Negro National League, first long lasting professional league for African American ball players. He founded and managed the Chicago American Giants, one of the most successful black baseball teams. And um, National Negro National League played an exciting brand of baseball that kept the fans entertained. Their talent fueled the resurgence of the white-owned MLB. That's Major League Baseball. Mm. However, instead of the uh, Negro National League team being consolidated into the MLB, mm, mm, mm. here we go, and their owners get to keep their teams, they were raided, mm. and picked apart for the best of their talent. Once again. A point illustrated in William C. Rodham's book, Forty Million Dollar Slave. The book I just mentioned. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's Frank how we like lose that. our power. I knew Frank would like That's that. how we lose our power. It explains the whole million dollar slave. Read that book, ladies and gentlemen. Read it. Read it. So that's what happened. You know, they went to the major leagues that are letting them Merge with us and going from there, or even be expansion teams. They was like, no, sir. We just we'll gonna steal you, it. You and yeah, you. We gonna take you. The rest of y'all hit hit the bricks. Hit the brick. Yeah, that's how it happened. And see, that's why critical race theory is needed, because this is what you need to learn. How did the National Negro Leagues get busted up? They were raided and destroyed by, by MLB, by Major League Baseball, and that's why I do not watch baseball today. I just don't watch because it's boring, but. Uh, <laughs> According to this card, when blacks played and the teams played each other, it was a much more exciting game. Well, it was entertaining, yeah, because they, they 
used to put on a show, uh, you know, fancy catches, um, fancy throws, mm -hmm. you know, they used to do splits, little spins, you know, little flips. So they, they, they put on a show with just regular catching and that was it. I would have loved that. So, yeah, yeah. So um, pull up some YouTube videos of it if you want to watch it. Rue Foster. Rue Foster, ladies and gentlemen. 1979, died in 1930. They didn't acknowledge no, 1879, him. he was born. 1879, mm -hmm. died in 1930. They didn't recognize him until 50 years later. That's a shame. But that's America. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, you have anything else, Frank? No, we are, I'm glad they mentioned that book, yeah, <laughs> 40 yeah. Million Dollar Slave. I knew Frank a lot. Kyrie, that. make sure you read it. <laughs> <laughs> with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are out. All right, we are out.